Okay, we're gonna jump. Uh, we're gonna really switch things up just because I like just have a bad habit of keeping people off guard. <laughs> all right, all right. We're gonna jump into the music inter- industry itself right now. Okay. Um, I'm sure you can remember back where it used to be. Albums is probably before your time. <laughs> that goes back to my day. Okay. Um, you know, but uh, CDs. Okay. And then What's everything, it? and then everything migrated over to the MP3s. Yes, sir. And it moved from buying a full album. I think they're still called albums. Yeah, albums. Um, into okay, you can buy people buy the singles now. Do you think that that has helped or hurt the music industry? Because it used to be like like even on a CD where you had the potential for something that wasn't like wasn't released or that real you know people didn't really hear that much you didn't put out there to actually be bigger than something you released do you think that's helped her or a little bit of both um especially I, since you have the degree yeah like i feel it helps in a situation just off the strength like i have an album and i have three singles on itunes actually and let's say if a single is more of a teaser okay let's say if i'm standing out i'm selling sandwiches you yeah. never ate a sandwich from me before, but I have a piece of a sandwich. I give you a piece of that sandwich and you love it. You're like, oh my God, this is the best thing I ever had in my life. I'm going to buy a whole sandwich from you now. And whenever I'm hungry, I'm going to come back to you. I never thought about it that way. I'm not too sure too many people have. That's a great analogy, honestly. But if it was singles, it's the same way. I don't know you, so why am I going to give you $15 for an album? Or right. Why am I going to give you $10 for an album? But I have a dollar twenty nine or whatever it is on yeah. iTunes. I think my single is ninety nine cents, which is called Twist, but with two eyes. Um, but um, whole point is is promoting yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but um, like little things like that. Like if you have a dollar opposed to fifteen dollars, you can check me out. If you don't like it, you just only spent a dollar opposed to fifteen dollars. And also that way you also reach a wider wider audience. Exactly. You know, for the people that. I mean, not always, you know, the people that are, that are killing themselves at the at the lower paying jobs, you're also reaching a wider audience exactly. that way. Because that way, I'd rather reach a thousand people with a dollar than a hundred with 15. Okay, you take that, you take that train of thought with business and that's, yeah. that's pretty much, you know, <laughs> from what I know about business, I've never had a degree, but there's two, there's basically two approaches to it. You either go for the few with the higher price or the masses with the lower price. Exactly. And I feel like you get a lot more out of it because like, let's say if they heard that single, like I said before, if they hear the single, they love the single, they're gonna go and buy the album. So instead of making that 15, you just made 16 Uh in a sense. So it helps the artist and it helps the buyer because they actually got a chance to be exposed to something, took that risk, they took the chance to be able to open their mind up to something different. Okay. And then when they like it, they're gonna follow you no matter what. Yeah. Cause like if you're a fan, you're gonna follow that artist. Like me, I'm a big Jay Z fan. Granted, I heard my first Jay Z. Mine's Daughtry, believe it or not. <laughs> so like when I first heard Jay Z, it was for free. But then when he came out with his next CD, I bought it. Mm-hmm. So like sometimes you have to take that risk instead of selling an album for fifteen dollars. Sometimes you have to give people a free sample or you know, something for free or something at a discounted price to bring them in. Yeah. Like when clubs have an opening, they have discounted things to attract people that make them want to come back. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with music. It's just when you bring them in, you have to make sure you impress them. A lot of people don't do that. They'll release something that's garbage. And then when they're like, well, why didn't they want to buy my album? Well, because your single sucked. Yeah. (laughs) Or when, or like when they go, or like, when you go see them, that the stu- the studio version sounds great, but the live version <clears throat> sucks. Yeah. So you have to make sure every time that you're you're performing or when you're giving something to somebody, it has to be the best that it can be. So that way, they become like pretty much like addicted to it. Mm-hmm. That they need it. Like I'm hungry for that sandwich. I need to eat that every day for lunch. Thank <laughs> God there's a McDonald's up the road. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, you're getting me hungry. That's no, why it's like, <laughs> no, don't worry about it. It's, it's just like, a, I'm like, you know, I did have a little bit to eat. <laughs> now, um, here's something that, that is still a contention thing with people. Okay. okay. Even though it's illegal. Okay. 
when over the years since Napster first came out, mm -hmm. there's been the battle between saying file sharing is kill, has killed is has contributed to a lot of damage to the music industry. But you have independent artists and small label artists that are saying, okay, tech, they're breaking the law, but you know what? We got a lot more listeners. We actually, our sales increased on that. And I've heard both arguments. So uh, especially when it, when it first went down, you know, I, I paid, really paid attention to it. What do you, do you think? I realize that you're an artist. You know, you know yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is a tricky, um, you feel free not to answer the question. Oh, no, by all means. Pretty much how I look at it is it can it's both damaging and empowering. Because for example, my first Jay-Z CD I heard for free. But I went and bought the album because I appreciated the music that much that I became a fan. Right. It can hit people one of two ways. You can listen to the album and be like, yo, this is really good. I'ma buy the next one. Or you know what? I'ma go out and buy the album that I got for free just because it's that good. Or at least one or two sing your favorite yeah. singles like, off I'll it. I'll give him a couple bucks because I heard it and I liked it. Right. Or you can just have a legit fan who one day might want to come and see you perform or might want to um, buy a t-shirt from you or something. You might get that money but just not in the CD. Yeah. So it all depends on how people look at it. If you're only in it for record sales, yes, it's gonna hurt you. Yeah. But if you're looking at it in the long run, if you have that music that can make people legit fans, there's nothing to worry about. Yeah. In my I, personal opinion, I have nothing to worry about. And also, and <laughs> I wasn't talking. I wasn't talking about people, and I've seen this so many times with music and with DVDs, where you see this guy in the truck on the side of the road mm -hmm. who downloaded three million songs, and he, you know, to me, I'm like. Never cop around when you need them, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, um, one other question about the music industry itself, and we're going to a couple other questions. We're going to give you a shot to really promote the hell out of yourself, right. and we're going to wrap this up. Um, where do you see the music industry going from here? Whether it's, you know, rap, hip-hop, in general, where it's, okay, you know, we've, you know, going back to gener younger generations are starting to forget Beatles and everything. And the technical side, with you know the albums, the eight tracks, the CDs. Where do you see the music industry going from this point? Because it seems like everything's in a, a state of change again. It seems like it seems like we almost need to we almost need that state of change again. Um, I feel like as of right now, everything is starting to go digital. Um, there's a lot more people that can gain access to a lot of different things with a cell phone, a tablet. Um, a laptop, computer, yeah. A laptop. So instead of like with me, I'm starting to buy a lot more music from iTunes because I don't have to go out and like buy a CD. Mm -hmm. And I'm still supporting my my favorite artist, right? Or and even if like let's say if my CD scratched, I have to go out and buy a new CD. But if I buy the CD on iTunes, well, like, what happened to what happened to me about four years ago was. The place I lived in caught fire. Over 300 CDs, over 500 cassettes, and over 20 albums gone. Yeah. And a lot of it was out of print that you can even find to buy an MP3 online. So yeah, it's. So like in that situation, if that was to happen to me, I would just go back on and get a new laptop and just download everything again. Yeah. It would be free. So like. Because technically, you did pay for it once. Yeah, like you pay for it once and you have it forever. Yeah. So it kind of, it doesn't let you forget. Yeah. It doesn't let you forget the Beatles or Michael Jackson or, you know, or James Brown. Those God knows people. how many one hit wonders out of the 80s. Exactly. I grew up in the 80s, so. It won't, it won't let yeah. you forget, like, a JP, a JP, yeah. P, uh, you know, like some of your favorite people that you supported locally. Or the first, or the first rap rock crossover hit. Uh, Run DMC and, um... Errol Smith? What was the song title? Rock This Way. Walk This Way? How many videos were there for it? I only knew of two. Yep. Okay. Er, DMC did one. Errol Smith did, did. Okay. You know your music history. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just had to throw that in. No, no, no. I was just like, yeah. hold on. Wait, 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 wait. You, hey, he knows. He's a certified musician, a certified artist. He knows his music history. I try to be like, how I look at it is you can't, you can't be in the future if you don't know your past. 
Yeah. And like by all means, like I deeply appreciate like the people who did this music before me because at the end of the day, if I didn't have someone to listen to, I wouldn't be inspired. Yep. So like I look at people like Jay Z, um, Big L, LL Cool J, which is one of my favorites randomly, but it's one of my favorites. So like some of those doing people, it. You know, oh, yeah. some of those people are just like the people who I listen to. I'm like. Yo, like if I could do a song with that person or if I could just meet that person and pick their mind, like it would make me a better Throwing person. the Beastie Boys just for the hell of it? Hell, actually, I, for, I forget the song, but it's like this robot effect. It's like, wow, wow, wow. Yo, uh -huh. like that song, like I was probably like eight years old when I heard that song. But like I knew then, like that was like one of my favorite songs. Like them, crisscross, like I'll be like with my little boombox, like, uh. Uh, uh, oh, in the like, clubs, jump still gets. I mean, literally, when that hits that, it's like pogo jump, sticks. Jump. <laughs> Not, so, okay, fin uh, final question. Okay. Um, advice to musicians, artists, no matter what genre and no matter what their age is. Advice. If my advice to you guys would probably be for one, never discriminate another artist just because of the genre. Like just because you're a rock artist doesn't mean just because you're a metal artist doesn't mean you can't collab with someone from a different genre. It's music. It's a universal language. Um, just off the strength of that, never give up on a dream. Like there's been people who like question me about it. Like you're in college, why are you trying to do music? And I tell them just because this is something that I'm good at. This mm -hmm. is I, I wasn't blessed to be able to dribble a ball or to to be like oh like uh, albert einstein super smart my my craft is music that's mm -hmm. what i do and i'm pretty sure anyone who does the same will be able to relate yeah. but on the same ticket music is going to be something that brings the people together no matter what the situation is if you're always going to be able to find at least one person that loves your favorite song and you, here in the lehigh valley it's like i tell people I love the artists and the, you know, the actual hey, painters, hey. The, no, the painters and everything, the artists. Oh, okay, gotcha. But here in Leah Valley, one of the two things that will always get people out, even in bad weather, is music. Yeah, definitely. Because this area has always been, you know... A music generated culture. Yeah. Now it's time for you to promote the living hell out of yourself and go a little nuts. Okay, well, if you guys are looking for me, just Google J, capital P, is J, the letter J, capital, not, not with an A, but with an O and the letter P and most likely my YouTube will pop up, Instagram will pop up, Twitter will pop up on any social network you'll be able to find me. Um is J underscore capital with an O P on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook the boy JP rapper or Facebook.com backslash the boy JP. You can type in Trash and Track Tuesday for my freestyle series. You can look me up on iTunes for my mixtape bundle up two. Um, also, my singles are on iTunes, Do My Thing, that's Thang with an A, and an I Wish, and along with my new single, Twist. Um, also, pretty much we're working on my new um, EP, which is called The Twist Files. It'll be on datpiff.com, that's D-A-T-P-I-F-F.com. Um, and then also, we're working on my next website, which will be jcapitalp.com, hopefully. So just keep in contact with me. I love talking to my supporters and people who have more questions. And we got to leave this on a cliffhanger. <laughs> You're actually here. At Me we're actually doing this at Meat Beats yeah. Productions here well, in Bethlehem. Um, right now, I'm about to leave it on the cliff. Got to leave it on the cliffhanger. <laughs> Definitely. So on that note, feel free. Check me out. And then I might give you guys a different surprise later on. Who knows? <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Man. I appreciate it.